Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is LT Advanced Architecture. Earlier, I have created one video related to the normal LT architecture. Please watch that video because all the things are interlinked. Presently, we will be talking about LT Advanced Architecture uh, or it is also called LT Advanced. It is also denoted by LTA or it is 4.5 G. Now, this LTA Advanced, as the name indicates, it is designed to increase the network capability, network capacity of the existing LTA network and it well supports to all existing uh, networks. So interoperability is quite possible. I mean, it is well possible. Some of the important features of this LTA Advanced technology are peak data rates that is maximum data rate for uplink it is 500 mbps for downlink it is 1 gbps spectrum efficiency it is five times more than the existing lte network then reduced transition time packet transmission times less than 5 milliseconds it supports mobility up to 500 km per hour which was not the case in the normal lte and it gets connected within less than 50 milliseconds. So these are some important features uh, for LT advanced uh, technology. Now this is the architecture diagram for this uh, LT advanced network. Uh, it is very much similar to the earlier that is uh, normal LT architecture. Slight differences are there. I have written the meaning of each and every uh, uh, notation which is used in this architecture. So UE is user equipment. We have already discussed this part in the last video. Uh, one additional block I have shown that is Pemto cell. It is basically smaller cell. Now in this case, ENB, ENB is evolved node B. ENB can handle one or more cells at a time. This is an important feature which handles more than one cell at a time. As well as it supports the femto cell. Femto cells, as I said, it is the smallest cell which covers the home area. Uh, then this X2 are the interface which is used uh, for UE and between E and Bs. Then for SGW and PGW, recall the things: SGW is serving gateway, PGW is PDN gateway. So interface used is S5 and between PGW and PRCF. PRCF is policy and charging rule functions. It is interfaced which is denoted by S7. Then this block MME is mobile management entity. Uh, PRCF as I said it is policy and charging rule functions. In this block we already discussed ENB is evolved node B. Then UE is user equipment. Uh, Premtosis I have already explained. We know that ENB contains the uh, consists of the base station. Now, as I mentioned earlier, an important advantage is the speed, which is much more than that of uh, the existing uh, uh, LTE network. That is that is the most important feature of this network. Now, it has two main parts. First part, this this part I am talking about is UTRAN. Uh, it is E U T R A N. That is Evolved Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network. Radio Access Network is also denoted by RAN. So it is Evolved Universal Terrestrial uh, Radio Access Network. And EPC. EPC is Evolved Packet Core. This part. Evolved Packet Core. Now let, let us discuss the function of each part. First I will explain different interface shown in this architecture. The interface X2 as shown in this architecture is used to connect UE that is user equipment with ENBs as well as base stations of ENB. As I said earlier, base station is integral part of ENB. So base stations of ENB are connected uh, by using this interface X2. So whatever I have shown with the uh, red pen are the uh, are representing interface. Now S1 is the interface which is used to connect EUTRAN and EPC. 
EPC is evolved packet core. So uh, to connect these two blocks, S1 interfaces are used. It basically uh, connects E and B with MME. MME is mobile management entity. Now this interface S5 is used for control plane and uh, control C plane and control S plane. There are two planes basically. I will write it over here. Control C plane and control S plane. Control C plane manages the communication sessions as well as it manages communication sessions and it controls the communication sessions. Whereas control S plane manages the communication traffic. So, to cover, I mean to adjust these two control planes, control C plane and control S plane, interface S5 is used. Interface S7, as shown in this uh, diagram, it gives interface between PDN, that is PGW, so PDN gateway and PRCF. PRCF is policy and charging rule functions. Then, what extra thing which I have shown compared to the uh, only LT architecture, normal 4G LT architecture is HGI interface. So it is the interface which which is used to connect control C plane and control S plane uh, between PGW and that is PDN network and internet. Now the functions of uh, all these blocks which I have listed over here, HGW that is Serving gateway is used for routing and forwarding packets between UE user equipment and PDN network. It also helps charging and handover mechanism. We have already discussed handover mechanism in the earlier videos. Then MME, that is mobile management entity, establishes bearer path. You can well uh, remember this word like this in a, in the simplified language. Uh, bearer path ka matlab hai smooth path. So establishes bearer path for UE user equipment as well as it manages mob mobility and UE access. Then PGW that is PDN uh, network, PDN gateway, it, it is used to route the traffic to and from from the PDN network. Next part is LT frame structure. Actually, there are two types of frames. One is FDD and another is TDD. This FDD stands for Frequency Division Duplex. Actually, it is used for duplex communication. Duplex communication ka matlab hai two-way communication. Similarly, TDD stands for Time Division Duplex. The major difference between the two is, in case of FDD, two different frequencies are used for uplink and downlink. Whereas in TDD, same frequencies are used for uplink and downlink, but time slot is different. That is the major difference between FDD and TDD. This diagram, first diagram, shows the uh, frame structure for FDD. One frame is having a time duration of 10 milliseconds. Up they go. There are 20 slots. The length of each slot is 0 0.5 millisecond. There are 20 slots and 10 sub frames. So naturally, each sub frame consists of two slots. Duration of each slot is 0 0.5 millisecond. So duration of one sub frame will be 2 into 0 0.5 milliseconds. So this is the FDD frame structure. As I uh, mentioned, in case of FDD, since it is frequency division duplexing, different frequencies are used for uplink and downlink communication. Next is TDD, time division duplex frame. Again, one frame is for 10 milliseconds, but there are 0 to 9, means 10 slots. Some look 0 to start. Kare. So 0 to 9 means there are 10 slots. In this case, same frequency is used for uplink and downlink, but time slots are different. Ab dekho, ek slot mein maine dikha hai ki the first part is for downlink pilot time slot. Middle part represents th this downlink pilot time slot, as the name indicates, is used for uh, downlink uh, communication. Then last part is uplink pilot time slot. Again, same logic. Uplink, it is used for uplink communication and in between this GP is written. 
that is the that represents the guard point or guard part which separate out the uplink and downlink time slots next part is technologies associated with lte advanced first technology is carrier aggregation <coughs> As the name indicates, many carriers are used simultaneously, so it improves the efficiency of the system as well as it is used for wider bandwidth. So, multiple carriers of bandwidth 20 megahertz aggregated for the same UE, that is user equipment, which is called carrier aggregation. In this case, transmission and for transmission and reception of the signal. Five carrier components are used simultaneously. Second technology is enhanced MIMO. As the name indicates, MIMO means multiple input, multiple output. It gives improved uplink as well as downlink multiple axis and uh, it makes use of multiple antennas. Next is coordinated multipoint that is COMP. Uh, as the name indicates, it makes use of coordination between multiple points. That means it is making use of multi-cell approach. Multi-cell means many cells are coordinated together. We know that the structure of cell is hexagonal like this. So in case of normal technology, if any user is at the edge of a cell, suppose UE user equipment is over here at the edge of cell, then uh, there are many chances that call may be blocked or there are there is less coverage area but due to uh, use of this coordinated multipoint activity or technology many cells are coordinated simultaneously so even if the user is at the center of cell or even if the user is at the edge of cell like this then also the efficiency will be same so it gives better efficiency compared to the earlier technology the fourth important technology is relay nodes. Actually, these are wireless nodes. <clears throat> these nodes, relay nodes, are basically used to improve the coverage area. See, if in, in any system, if there is a problem of coverage and not the problem of capacity of the network, then in that case, this type of relay nodes plays an important role. Actually, it extends the capacity beyond the cell edge. ये कैसे पॉसिबल है जैसे ये रिले है ये एक्चुअली एक्सेप्ट द इनपुट सिग्नल डिकोड सीट देन अगेन अप्लाइज री एनकोडिंग एम्पलीफाइज इट एंड देन री ट्रांसमिट इट सो इट हेल्प्स टू अवॉइड द नॉइज सिग्नल बिकॉज इट इज एक्चुअली एक्टिंग एज अ रिपीटर सो दिस इज द फंक्शन ऑफ रिले नोड द नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज कंपेरिजन बिटवीन एल टी एंड एल टी एडवांस एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से जैसे देखो ये कंपेरिजन पूछते हैं तो ऑलरेडी मैंने चार्ट बनाया है ये दिस आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट एज फर एज कंपेरिजन बिटवीन द टू इज कंसर्न अगर क्वेश्चन ऐसा है कि वॉट आर द ड्रॉबैक्स ऑफ एल टी कंपेयर टू एल टी एडवांस सो दीज आर द पॉइंट एडवांटेजेस ऑफ एल टी एडवांस सो यू नीड टू रेफर दिस पार्ट प्रेजेंट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द कंपेरिजन बिटवीन टू टेक्नोलॉजीज सो चैनल बैंडविड इट इज फाइव टेन फिफ्टीन और ट्वेंटी मेगा हर्ट्स फॉर एल टी for lte advanced for downlink and uplink it is different for downlink it is 100 megahertz channel bandwidth then uh, for uplink channel bandwidth is 40 megahertz with carrier aggregation just now i have explained you the concept of carrier aggregation then spectral efficiency spectral means this word is represented to frequency so spectral efficiency that means uh, how much efficiently uh, use of frequency is done using this technology so it is moderate for lte and for lte advanced it is three times greater than lte then peak data rates that means maximum data rates for downlink maximum data rate is 300 mbps and for uplink maximum rate data rate is 75 mbps for lte uh, whereas for lte advanced uh, downlink is maximum rate is 1 uh, gigabytes per second gbps and uplink is 500 mbps <coughs> mobility mobility is less than 350 kilometer per hour this supports for the mobility which is which can be greater than 500 kilometers per hour then latency rollout the meaning of this word latency is this word latency is delay in the system so delay rollout cup no technology if you are talking about lt do rollout of delay you used in communication is 10 millisecond and uh, 
uh, whereas in case of LTE advanced, it is less than uh, five milliseconds. So these are few most important points uh, for the comparison between LTE and LTE advanced. So dear students, that's it for today's session. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.